Howdy everyone, this is Andy from Zeldom once again. It hasn't been 7 full months yet since I've started Zeldom, and I'm already at 5,500 subscribers. Since I started this channel just as a hobby, I never expected to hit this milestone. Like, ever. Even Zeltic, whose channel grew at a rather fast pace when he started, barely had over 3,000 subs after 9 months of producing content, and he made far more videos than I have at this point in my channel's development. When I started, I only had very basic video editing skills and knew absolutely nothing about recording and editing audio, and was a terrible essay writer in school, but to be fair, I'm an engineering major, so whatever. But point is, I'm still developing these skills and I'm so grateful to have such an amazing and engaging community to talk about something I'm highly passionate about. But I'll cut myself off here so I don't give too many things away about me, since after all, I'm doing a Q&A for this 5,000 subscriber special. Also, I will be answering these without prepared answers, so I'll be stuttering and such like I always do in real life. I'm going to make this as genuine as possible for you guys, um, so, well, let's may as well get started. So the first question that was submitted to me was, what's your history with Zelda and what is your favorite Zelda game? Well, so I guess my first Zelda game ever when I, that I played as a kid was Spirit Tracks for the DS. Uh, but I guess back when I was in elementary school, um, I was I never really played many of the Zelda games growing up. Um, I did enjoy playing Spirit Tracks, and I was aware of the Zelda franchise through playing Smash Bros. Melee as a kid. But yeah, I, I never really was conscientious too much of the Zelda franchise uh, growing up. But my buddy John, who actually helped me start Zelda and made one video back when we started, um, he was a mega Zelda nerd, he and his two brothers were. So I was introduced to uh, the rest of the series by him, and so my 8th grade year of middle school, I decided I want to get a Zelda game after watching him play Twilight Princess, so I ended up buying Skyward Sword, and that's when I became a Zelda fan, and I've been buying and trying to play all the rest since then. Um, so my favorite Zelda game, whew, well, it was, it was definitely Skyward Sword that got me into the franchise, and that game has a very special place in my heart. Like, I I can't really give that up, give first place up from Skyward Sword, so like Skyward Sword's definitely tied for first, but in terms of actual like gameplay enjoyment, uh, Twilight Princess has really grown on me. I love the combat mechanics of Twilight Princess. Um, the story kind of does fall apart or get a little weak at the end, um, just due to the development and them throwing Ordon Village in right after the E3, but yeah, I think Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, I'd have to say are tied for my first place games, because I love them for very different reasons. Skyward Sword's mainly for the story, whereas uh, I think Twilight Princess has the stronger gameplay and world. So the same commenter asks another question, uh, what is my favorite first person shooter if I play anything like that? Um, well, I've only ever really had Nintendo consoles, so I don't really have too much experience with first-person shooters, but the only one I've ever played or owned myself has been Overwatch, but I jumped on that train I think in 2018, so a couple years after Overwatch came out, and by that point most of my friends had stopped playing the game, so I got it right after the, the big Overwatch hype was over. Um, but yeah, I... I still play. I still play Overwatch quite often. I I thoroughly enjoy it, but I've yeah, I've never been one to play Call of Duty, any, any CS:GO, anything like that. So I just have to say Overwatch since it's the only one I've ever ever played. I have played Call of Duty with some friends occasionally on their Xboxes, but uh, I can't play with a controller. I, I, I can't aim. Um, next one is what are my top three Zelda songs? That is a very very hard thing to pick. Uh, cause there, there's Zelda songs. I, ca I can't name like many Zelda songs that I don't like. So this is gonna gonna be kind of a hard one. Um, so I'm just, instead of answering the top three, I hope it's okay if I'm just gonna like say some of the t my favorites that first come to my head. And of course, like one of them is going to be like the Spirit Tracks title theme, and if, and I guess Overworld theme as well. Spirit Tracks has amazing music, especially for a DS game. I just wish those DS speakers had a, were a little bit higher quality, so you could enjoy them while playing the game more. But yeah, Spear Tracks, we need a full reorchestration of those. In fact, uh, Smash Bros. 
Smash Bros. has amazing remixes of the Spirit Tracks music, so uh, go listen to those if you haven't. Um, other music I like, Skyward Sword, I love all the music in that game. Um, the Overture is amazing, Ballad of the Goddess, how they can just take Zelda's lullaby and reverse it, that's amazing. Um, Romance in the Sky, and just the two romance themes, those are really good. Uh, Gruz's theme with the tuba, like, I can't really, th I can't really pick any out, just, they're all so good. Um, Twilight Princess, I guess, oh, Twilight Princess has a lot of good too. Like, there's the Courage song for Colin, and it's actually a, kind of a remix of, like, Lynx or the Hyrule Field theme, but Courage, such a beautiful tune. Ilya's theme. Ooh. Um, of course, uh, I like Mipha's theme, Revali, Revali's theme, or in fact, uh, the Revali Ace Archer or something from Age of Calamity. Amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't pick three out. I, I just I just can't do that. Um, but yeah, those are a lot of the songs I like. I, I like them all. Um, so I'm just going to move on to the next one, also from the same person. And is John your brother? No, John is not my brother. Um, he was just a friend I grew up with. And pretty much ever since we were like, I think in elementary school, we've been friends. Uh, so I reached out, he, yeah, like I said, he was the one who actually introduced me to the Zelda franchise as a whole uh, when I was in middle school. And so I reached out to him last year when I was interested in starting Zelda because he knows a whole lot about Zelda. And I fi figured if I want to make some Zelda theories, I may as well get some help from someone who knows a lot about Zelda. So I reached out to him, but he had some personal things come up and it doesn't really seem like he's going to be too interested in returning to the channel. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, and for those of you who don't know, my very second video, yeah, second video here on the channel, which was like a Majora's Mask synopsis, that was written and recorded by John. Um, but that's the only video he's ever appeared in here on this channel. He's contributed a little bit to like some of the earlier videos, but that's about it. Um, so, okay, the next commenter has three questions. Um, the first being, my favorite region in a Zelda game. Um, so he says it can be... Just, it could be for the lore or the historical significance in the lore. Uh, my favorite aspect of gameplay, temple, village, whatever. What's, what's my favorite region? I'd have to go with Skyloft. Just, <laughs> I'd love to live on Skyloft. It, it just has an amazing feel, a cool theme music. Like, I just wish I could live on Skyloft. <laughs> um, anyway, so that, that's all there is to it. Just Skyloft is so beautiful. Um, it's part of what made me love Skyward Sword. Um, and his second question, what is my second not, sorry, my second favorite non-Zelda related game or universe? Um, man, that's, a, that's actually a hard one. Um, cause like, I'm a gamer, I'm just not like a hardcore gamer. Like, like I said, I've only played, um, only owned Nintendo consoles growing up. So I haven't been really exposed to too many, uh, different franchises. Like, there's some I wish I would have played, like Final Fantasy. I've never played a Final Fantasy game, but after seeing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I really wish I had a PlayStation so I could play that. <laughs> um, but growing up, man, I, I'd, I'd have to go with Pokemon. Um, I had Pokemon, like, when I was, I think, six or seven years old. Or, like, right, I think I got Pokemon Diamond shortly after it came out. Um, and ever since, I haven't played Pokemon. A po I haven't gotten a new Pokemon game since I think 2012, after the release of like Black and White 2. But yeah, Pokemon's definitely a very nostalgic game for me, and Gen 4 is best. Um, so yeah, Pokemon is definitely my second favorite universe. And the last question from this viewer or commenter is going to be, if the rumors about a Zelda TV show ever came true, what would you like to see? Oh, wow. Well. There's so many games I'd like to see be made into a show. Um, like I think the best ones to practically turn into a movie or TV show would be Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. I think Skyward could make a pretty good movie too. Like the game's already very linear and cinematic. I think Skyward would work. And Twilight Princess is also very linear, uh, sorry, linear with a great story. So I think those four. Breath of the Wild would be cool. I just don't think Breath of the Wild would. It'd be hard. It'd be very hard to interpret that into a movie. So I'd probably have to say I'd prefer to see Knockering of Time movie first, 
um, just so that I could set up a Majora's Mask. So I think Majora's Mask is the first movie I'd ever want to see, uh, or I think that would be the best story. But obviously you have to establish Ocarina of Time before you can do that. Then maybe do like Skyward Sword as a prequel, and then Twilight Princess as a sequel to, to those two. But I think it would have to be an animated series. Um, I know there's been a lot of BS Netflix rumors out there for a Zelda TV series. And I think the most latest ones are starring Tom Holland as Link. Like, I love Tom Holland, but no, he, he's not Link. <laughs> um, I, I just don't think it would... I don't think a live action would uh, really work too well. And Link definitely would have to talk. I don't see a pr huge problem with that, as long as we just get a good voice actor for him. But I think he should still stay rather quiet. Um... But yeah, I think also, yeah, just should stay an animated series so they can uh, still give it that cartoony uh, Zelda feel, but also allow it to fe have the darker feel when appropriate for some of those games, like uh, Majora's Mask or Twilight Princess, or even just making some of the bosses. Um, yeah, and I think in terms of like a soundtrack, there's like a lot of good um, Zelda, like a, some Zelda fans who are musicians out there. Like, there's Rosen, he has amazing Zelda albums, like the Ch his Children of Termina album, that could be sh just licensed and put straight into a uh, Majora's Mask movie, in my opinion. I can just imagine, like, an Ember Lab Studio a Terrible Fate animation, but a full movie with the uh, Rosen Children of Termina soundtrack. Ooh, and anyway, anyway, um, I think I'm getting way off topic here, but yeah, I would love to uh, see a movie. Um, the mo one I would like to see most would be Majora's Mask. I think that would be a very, very cool movie to watch. Um, but And of course, just for my nostalgia purposes, I'd have to go with um, Skyward Sword. That'd be another really cool one. I think Twilight Princess would make a really cool sequel to Majora's Mask as well. Uh, anyway, anyway, let me get on to the next question here. I've spent a little while on this one. Uh, why did you start your channel? Was it out of inspiration? And why Zelda? And would you collab with someone who doesn't know or know some of it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading that correctly. Just uh, confusing grammar, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, so let me just start with the first one there. So why did I start my channel? Well, because I just had a... Uh, let, let me rewind a little bit. So back when COVID hit, I was still in college, but I was also working part-time to help uh, pay for school. And so while I was working in my warehouse, I was listening to like podcasts and I decided I had just gotten back onto my big old Zelda, uh, Zelda, uh, obsession. So I started listening to Zelda podcasts while working and I came across another Zelda podcast and just listening to David and Kate, the two hosts talking, I just had a lot of ideas for like theories and such in my head and stuff I wanted to talk about. And so I just didn't really have a good place to... Uh, share all of those ideas, so I figured, you know what, I'm just going to do what like Zeltic and all these other uh, Zelda theory channels do, and just start a YouTube channel. Uh, so that's literally just how it started. I just had ideas from listening to a podcast and figured I want to share something with people, and I figured the internet's the <laughs> best way during COVID, so that's how it came to be. Uh, was it out of inspiration? Well, yep. Yeah. Uh, just listening to people talk. Uh, that's pretty much all there was to it. I reached out to my buddy John, and he helped me get started with the channel and helped me launch it, but he didn't really stick around for too long, unfortunately, but um, who knows, he might come back, probably not, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, why Zelda of all? Because Zelda is such an awesome franchise. Um, I don't really have, I don't know if there's any other topic, like, besides physics, that I could, like, talk about and just rave on the internet for, uh, and... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a student, I don't think I could ever really have a YouTube channel just talking about physics. I, I would say a lot of things that are just wrong, <laughs> and yeah, I, w I would never be successful with a <laughs> physics YouTube channel. So, like Zelda it is, I love Zelda, I can probably talk about that easier too anyways. Um, and last question is, would you collaborate with someone who doesn't know or know some of it? I'm assuming they mean like just mu doesn't know much about Zelda? Or about the theory, um, I'd have to say yes and no. I mean, if you're talking about like just having uh, like a random person 
uh, come and do a collaboration on a video, that'd be a little bit difficult just because even working with other channels, it does take a lot of communication to make a video. And so, and also just a lot of work. So, if it, it'd be kind of hard to work with someone who doesn't already have like an established presence or doesn't know too much about what they're talking about. But, uh, like, I am working with two other channels, like the Bread Pirate and Nebulace right now. And with Nebulace's case, she has only played Breath of the Wild, Age of Calamity, and Phantom Hourglass. Um, so, like, she doesn't know a whole lot about the, like, the rest of the series. So, in some of the upcoming videos, or, yeah, we're having one video coming up here. One for my channel, one for her channel. And we're going to be talking about, or I'm, I'm going to be bringing up some points from other games. Um, so that's going to be my portion or contribution to the video, and hers is going to be uh, more of the Age of Calamity and Breath of the Wild content, because that's what she's more comfortable with. So yeah, I'm totally down for making videos with people who don't know as much as many things about the rest of the series, but it, it would take quite a bit of work to make a video with someone who doesn't have an established, doesn't have the experience making a video, or like just have that trust factor, you know? Uh, but I do love reaching out to the community and getting advice from you guys, because so often, almost every video I make, like, I just have uh, viewers comment a bunch of things that I did not know. Because I'm still, like, a relatively new Zelda fan, so there are plenty of things I do not know about the franchise. Um, and there's other things people comment that they believe to be canon, but it's more of a theory. But, like, I mean, that that's what's fun about this. We can just talk about our headcanon. Um, and plus, with most of the theories, we can't prove them entirely. It's just fun ideas to talk about. Um, and I think I think that's what makes it worth it. It's just a lot of fun to make. Um, so next question is, what is my most favorite Zelda game? Uh, I think that's kind of similar to the first question. Um, I, yeah, it's kind of a tie between Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. Um, yeah, I, I'll just have to leave it at that for now. I think I've already touched up on that in a previous question. And the same, same viewer also asked, what is my opinion on Fierce Deity Link? I think he's a very cool mechanic in the game. I think he makes the Majora's mat or the Majora boss battle at the very end of the game a little bit too easy. Like you can beat him in like 10 seconds or something. It just Fierce Deity is OP. Uh, but I think he, I wish there was a lot more lore established to him because the game gives us so many just subtle hints. And even Aonuma is so, like, ambiguous when he's, at, like, answering questions about the Fierce Deity Mask. So I think it's a very cool introduction to Majora's Mask's lore. It'd be cool if we knew a little bit more about it, though, since we only have, like, a few bullet points of information to go off of for our theories. But, I mean, hey, that has led to a lot of theories about the Fierce Deity. And I know on here on my channel, one of the vi videos that made my channel blow up was... A very far-fetched theory, but hey, it's people have responded very well to the idea. So, I mean, I guess kudos to that. A fear Stevie Link, a uh, very cool concept. Uh, I just wish there was a little bit more information about him. And okay, next one is who is my main in Age of Calamity? Uh, well, of course, I can't, I can't abandon my boy Link. Link is definitely my most played character in Age of Calamity. I think that's a rather common thing. Um, but other than that, I really like to play Mifa um, for the healing. That helped me out since I was doing solo player my first playthrough. And especially when we got to the point where there was like just tons of guardians, where I'm finding three guardians at once and like a Lionel at the same time. Oh, that's just I, I needed a lot of healing, so I'm not I'm not good at uh, hack and slash. But I mean, I, I got used to it. Uh, so Mifa is one of my favorites. I think Impo was really fun to play. I didn't really play too many other characters actually until I beat the main story and started doing more of the side quests. Um, yeah, but there's some fun ones. I took me a while to figure out Sidon. Sidon's a beast. Um, Taba, Taba's really fun to play. I like him so much better than Rivali. Um, and honestly, like, spoiler for those who haven't gotten there, but eventually you can unlock Teriko as a playable character. And Teriko, who, he is, he's fun. <laughs> his skill set is a little broken in my opinion, especially for such a little tiny guardian, but it's whatever. Um, yeah, definitely most played as Link, but I really enjoy playing uh, Impa, Mifa, Teba, and Terigo. Almost forgot his name for a second there. 
And uh, oh, continuation of that question was who feels mo most like themselves gameplay wise? Oh, uh, gameplay wise, who feels most like themselves? Yeah, I'm gonna need a second to think about that because Link, Link's probably like the most straightforward character there is. He doesn't, he can't really, other than just having better fighting skills in Bre Breath of the Wild, just because it's a different type of game. Overall, his kit matches pretty darn well with Breath of the Wild. Impa, we don't see Impa being able to fight. She's a, she's kind of a hybrid of the Yiga and the Sheikah monks. So Impa's kit kind of confused me for a while, but uh, whether that's actually canon, I don't know. Zelda, just the random bullcrap with the Sheikah Slate, I don't, not a fan of the Sheikah Slate, but the Bow of Light and her ceiling power. Um, it's actually a little bit underpowered if you think about it, uh, but I mean, I, for a good purpose. Like, you can't just instantly win the game after that point in the story, which makes sense. Um, Mifa being able to waterbend, that didn't make sense to me either, but I, it, it was at least fun. Overall, I think Ravali. Yeah, Ravali probably has the most likely kit. Uh, Taba, I would say, is also close, but he can just shoot way too many arrows. <laughs> uh, he can just make... Taba can literally make it rain. I think he's better than Rivali, in my opinion, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, I'd probably have to go with Taba or Rivali for the most... who's most like themselves in terms of, like, lore and gameplay between Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity. Um, and their final question is, how's my day going? My day is going good. Uh, I just started school, so I'm, it's getting a little bit stressful already, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to keep making my content anyways, and I'll get through it. I'll get through it, especially with my collaborations here. Talking with these people is a lot of fun and helps uh, get me away from the stress from school. So the next question is, how many people do I have on my team? It is at the moment just me. When I started, I had John. Um, he helped me get the channel like channel page set up and everything um but at the moment and made the help make this first two videos but at the moment it's just me i don't really outsource any of my editing or, or anything at the moment uh i might one day do outsource editing but we'll see uh yeah i do all the video editing audio editing right script writing that's all that's all done by me right now uh so I guess it's kind of like Celtic. I think actually most of the big channels at the moment, they do almost everything by themselves. So yeah, it's just me. Uh, n next question. What's your favorite Zelda game in a list? Or what, what are my favorite Zelda games in a list? That is, whew. I've honestly been thinking about just making a top 3D Zelda games list. In, in a video and a top 2D games because I have a hard time like comparing the two because overall I think the 3D are a lot more like immersive yeah that, that's probably the best word immersive but there are a lot of good 2D games that I that I value very highly um but I'll, I'll, but what the heck I'll just go ahead and spoil that for you anyway so like I said favorite two um I'd have to when I make a list I'd have to definitely settle between Skyward Sword Twilight Princess and um, without thinking through all the without without giving them numbers I'd definitely go close between the two uh, for first place and second place with Skyward Sword Twilight Princess third place Breath of the Wild fourth Ocarina uh, I'd probably actually have to go with, Major, with Majora's Mask Majora's Mask would be fourth place followed by Ocarina and yes those are top five uh, they're, they're all so good so it, like, the, don't think it like I like them necessarily less than each other, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all just great games. It's, it's kind of hard. I don't want to diminish the value just by putting them in a list necessarily, but it, putting them in a list, that that's what I have to do. Um, and my sixth favorite Zelda game, if I'm going to be mixing up 2D and 3D, would not be Wind Waker. Wind Waker would probably be at the towards the very bottom of my list, which I know is going to make a lot of people very upset. Uh... But I just did not have a fun time with Wind Waker. The music is amazing, and I think the concept of it is cool, but the game I just didn't have very much fun with. Um, I'd probably have to put either Spirit Tracks, A Link to the Past, or Minish Cap as number six. 
But those would definitely be the next three in the list for 2D. Yeah. Man, I don't have the list of all the games here, but so I'm, I'm not going to go through and make the entire list, but those would probably be my top picks at the moment. So I guess that'd be, what, uh, six, seven, eight, eight picks? <laughs> so I, I think, hope that's good enough. Um, I'm definitely very interested in making a a list of my favorites, kind of like a, how Zeltic, he made a who's the strongest champions or who's the strongest Link out of all the generations and used like the, a bunch of different factors. Um, and use those to create a numeric score. I think I might do something like that with my uh, with my favorite Zelda games, and definitely split them up between 2D and 3D, of course. But th th I th yeah, I think that's a really cool video idea. So I think I might do that actually. Um, second to last question. So these last two will be from Instagram. Who do you ship each generation of Link with? Okay, so I am doing my Link's Loves ship analysis videos. Um, I've done. <laughs> The games I have covered so far would have been Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, oh, yeah, and Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and then Breath of the Wild, Age of Calamity. Those are the videos I've done so far, and so what I've concluded for those have generally been my personal bias is Z-Link for Skyward Sword, um, Malin and Link for Ocarina of Time, and I guess if you want to include Majora's Mask in there, I don't think Majora's Mask was actually real, but that's just my theory. Uh, but yeah, I think Kremia, or I guess Romani is, is his age, so Romani and Link for Majora's Mask, or they're the counterparts to Malin. But yeah, overall just Malin for Ocarina of Time. And then, uh, Min, Min is a good one, but since she destroyed the Mirror of Twilight in Twilight Princess, uh, it's just Ilya. Uh, Zelda and Link, yeah, they don't really ha seem to have any kind of connection in Twilight Princess. So I think Ilya is definitely the strongest choice for that game, but, uh, and Breath of the Wild, as much as I like Mifa, Mifa's dead in Breath of the Wild, so it's, it has to be Zelda, pretty much, and then Age of Calamity, I think it generally can go either way still, um, they didn't really seem to focus too much on Mifa, but they did give her a very good chance, like, as I talked about in that video, Mifa and Zelda, they both seem to have the interest there, and Link could really go either way, so, in that video, I ship, um, Mifa and Link, for Age of Calamity, but Breath of the Wild, it has to be Z-Link for sure. And I'm not going to go through all the other games at the moment. I will say that Z-Link is obviously the strongest pick um, for most other games, um, but I definitely will try to do my best to include other candidates when I make the other Link's Loves videos. Um, my final question, which is actually by Nebulous, which is one of my upcoming collaborations, is what Z- Ugh. What Zelda theory do I wish was true? Who? Man, that's a hard one. Like, there's a lot of good Zelda theories out there, and like now that I'm being put on the spot without pretty much giving this any forethought, it's it's hard. I don't know. Like, there's been some really interesting ones. I remember watching like some Zeltic videos, um, how like the Forgotten Temple in Breath of the Wild could actually be the Temple of Hylia from Skyward Sword. Um, even in that video, Zeltic addresses some issues with that, but when I saw that, my mind was blown. Um, there's a lot of very strong connections there, and so that's one of the first ones that come to mind, but at the same time, I, I don't think it is. And I think it would be actually a little bit cooler if we had more had another Ruins that was the actual one, so I'm not going to pick that one by Zeltic. Um, man... I don't know, there's a lot of good ones. In fact, um, let me know in, like, in the comments below what your favorite Zelda theory is. Like, I'm, I'm curious to see what everyone else his favorite theory is um, to answer this question. But I really do like the idea that Link, sorry, not Link, but Majora's Mask was not real. I know that's a pretty controversial one, but I think Majora's Mask actually has a lot more emotional significance, uh, or at least, yeah, emotional significance to the Hero of Time if Majora's Mask was just all in his head. Um, so that's my theory. I know there's some there, uh, some theories where it's actually Skull Kid's dream. Um, I think it's Link's dream, but that's just me. And then I, I'm i not a supporter of the Link is Dead thing. Um, MatPat does have a very interesting and entertaining video, uh, he, and does bring up some very good points, actually. But overall, it just doesn't make sense. There's that the Hero of Twilight is a pretty much conf almost a confirmed descendant of the Hero of Time, so that alone would 
debunk that, but overall I think that it's a very in that Link being dead is an interesting theory, but I think it's more of his dream. Uh, yeah, but that's just me. Um, let me let me know what your uh, favorite theory is down in the comments below. I'm really interested to see, and I'll make sure to send some of those to Nebulous to answer her question on that. Uh, but that's yeah, that's the last uh, question I have for the Q and A. So thank you all for watching and helping to support the channel through this. Um, it's been a blast, and uh, I can't wait to see what uh, what comes in the future for the channel. Um, man, improvised uh, improvised outros are hard. So I guess I'll just say bye.